Um, when you guys are doing a problem like this, the main important thing, especially logarithms, and it got a little confusing since we're doing natural logarithms, but please just hear me out and follow me on this. You have to know the base or the general parent function, right? That's with no transformations. Here, you know the domain is from 0 to infinity. The range is from negative infinity to infinity. And the asymptote is at x equals 0. Okay, That's information that's given. The next thing I want you guys to do, well, when we have a base 3, that's going to affect how the graph increases and decreases. So now, let's do the parent graph of y equals log base 3 of x. Forget about the transformations. So when you have a lot of those transformations, just forget about them and just graph that parent graph with the base 3. And what you can do when you're doing that is create a table of values. So what I like to do, and again, I change it out of a function to an equation so I can rewrite it in exponential form. It makes a little bit sense. 3 to the y equals x. So I convert it to exponential form. All right. Now I need to choose a table of values. I can choose a table of values for x, but it's probably easier to choose a table of value for y because that's what you're raising the y to the power, right? Because you want to pick simple numbers. So what values would you want to raise 3 to to find our table of values? One. 0 and 1 would sound good, right? So if I put 0 in for there, that's 3 to the 0, which equals 1. So x equals 1 when y equals 0. And then I can also do, what about um, when y equals 1? When y equals 1, x equals 3. Yes? So those are two points I have. I have 1 comma 0 and 3 comma 1. So remember I told you to plot points on your graph. Now you have two points. Does that make sense? That's what I was expect. That's what I was telling you guys you could do on that last problem. But I did the table for the reflection, which is not wrong at all. But I know that some of you are still trying to confuse, so I think sometimes this is easier to do. All right? But if you want to use the table of values just with all the transformations, that's fine. You can do it that way. There's nothing wrong with that. But now when you guys look at this, you have two reflections. I told you guys this is reflect the x-axis. This is reflect the y-axis. So it doesn't matter which order you go. All right. If I'm reflecting the x-axis, the x-axis, instead of going over 3, up 1, I'm not going to go over 3, down 1, right? So now the graph looks like that. So that's the x-axis reflection. Right? Then you take that and you reflect it over the y-axis. So you take this and reflect over the y-axis. So now, if this is at 1 comma 0, the reflection over the y-axis of the green is going now going to be negative 1 comma 0. And then if you take the reflection of 3 comma 1 over the y, or sorry, 3 comma negative 1 over, you're now going to have negative 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 1. So your final graph is going to look something like that, with this being negative 3 comma negative 1 and this being negative 1, 0. Okay. Now let's go and look at the graph and see how does the domain and range fit. Well, the domain over here, we said the domain was from 0 to infinity because that's where the graph is. It, it approaches 0 and it goes to infinity. Well, now it's, on that four, now it's in the second and fourth quadrant. So it goes to negative infinity, but it, it's only going to go to 0. The range is going to cover all of them. And my asymptote, since I didn't transfer, since I didn't shift anything, my asymptote is still going to remain at 0. Okay, And that's it. So when you guys are doing these, a couple things for your homework that I want to make sure that you have is please make sure you guys include points.